Hello everyone, and welcome to this video about joint detection and decoding in short packet communications. My name is Alejandro Lancho. I'm currently a Marie Curie fellow at MIT, and this work was started during my time at Chalmers University of Technology. This is a joint work with Johan Osman and Giuseppe Drisi from Chalmers University of Technology. One of the big groups of services that will dominate the next generations of wireless communication systems, sometimes referred to as ultra-reliable low latency communications, presents a string of latency constraints, which require the use of short packets. During the last years, it has been shown how to optimally design short packets communications by means of finite block length information theoretical tools. However, most of the available results ignore the cost of packet detection. That is, the cost of distinguishing noise from an incoming data packet. In some applications such as sensor ne networks or random access protocols, this cost is significant. The traditional approach to tackle this problem is to use a preamble dedicated to detection in each packet. During the, this talk, we will answer two fundamental questions which are especially important when short packets are used. First, when is packet detection a performance bottleneck? Second, when is joint detection and decoding preferable to preamble-based detection? The considered problem setup is the following. We consider a frame synchronous system as the one we have in the figure where time is divided in frames of length n. The receiver task is to decide whether a frame contains noise or a data packet, and if it contains a data packet, to decode it. Within this setup, three types of error events are possible. False alarm, that is, when a packet is detected but nothing was transmitted. Misdetection, when a packet is present but not detected. And inclusive error, when a packet is present but not detected or it is detected but incorrectly decoded. In this talk, we will present finite block length achievability and converse bounds for joint detection and decoding. That is, when detection is also performed over the data. And for preamble-based detection and decoding, where detection is performed over a dedicated preamble inside the packets. The bounds are based on binary hypothesis testing. In particular, the achievability bound is based on the beta-beta bound by Jan Gerold and the converse bound is based on a tightened version of the so-called meta-converse bound by Polyansky et al. Binary hypothesis testing deals with the problem we have in this figure. We observe a random variable X, which might have been generated according to a distribution PX or according to an alternative distribution QX. Our task is to decide which of the two distributions generated the random variable X. To do so, we design a randomized test P of C given X, whose input is the vector X and whose output is a binary value, that is zero or one. We use the convention that C equals one indicates that the test chooses P of X and C equals zero that the test chooses Q of X. By means of the following Neiman Pearson functions, we can trade off between the error probabilities obtained if X was generated according to the distributions P or Q. Indeed, the beta function yields the minimum error probability under hypothesis Q if the probability of succeed under hypothesis P is larger than or equal to alpha. Similarly, alpha yields the error probability under hypothesis P if the probability of error under hypothesis Q is smaller than or equal to beta. Both quantities are achieved by the Neiman Pearson test. We consider the following system model, where an active transmitter selects a message W from the set of n possible messages to transmit, and it is encoded in the signal X. Note that the set of possible signals at a given channel use X includes the symbol zero which represents an idle transmitter. Then the signal X goes through the channel with channel low P of Y given X and the received signal Y feeds a decoder whose task is to guess the message W that was transmitted. 
the decoding process can be viewed as follows. The receiver partitions the set of possible received signals y to the n into n plus one disjoint regions, where R0 is the region where the receiver decides that nothing was transmitted, that is, that the transmitter was idle. The other regions then represent the regions corresponding to the n possible transmitted messages. According to these representations of the decoding process, it is easy to see that there are three type of error events that can be defined as we have here, where, for example, the probability of misdetection is the average over all possible transmitted code words, where given that the code word M was transmitted, the received signal Y lies in the region zero, and hence we decide that nothing was transmitted. For this system model, we have two main results for joint detection and decoding, an achievability bound and a converse bound. The achievability bound is based on the beta-beta framework by Jan Gerol. The analysis leading to the final result showed in this slide uses sun on random coding plus a decoder based on the Neiman Pearson text. Here, P of Y is the output distribution induced by the selected input distribution P of X. P of Y, given X equals zero, is the output distribution induced by noise. That is, when the transmitter is idle. And Q of Y is the auxiliary output distribution selected to perform binary hypothesis testing. Then P of X and Y denotes the joint probability distribution of X and Y, and PX, Q of Y, denotes the joint probability distribution obtained when Y is distributed according to the auxiliary output distribution Q of Y, in which case X and Y are assumed to be independent. Overbound depends on two binary hypothesis tests. First, there is a Neiman Pearson alpha function that relates the false alarm and the misdetection probabilities via the parameter delta one, which can take values between zero and one. Second, the inclusive error includes the misdetection term and two extra terms that depend on the second binary hypothesis test that accounts for the probability of committing an error in the decoding process. Note that this binary hypothesis test depends on the parameter delta two, which can take values between zero and one, and that can be also optimized to obtain the tightest result. The converse bound is based on a tightened version of the so-called meta converse bound. This bound can be found in a paper by Polyansky and Verdu in 2014. We can observe that the bound contains a term very similar to the classical metaconverse result with a numerator penalized by the possibility of false alarming messages. We also have a second term, this indicator function, that introduced the trade-off between the false alarm and the misdetection probabilities. Note that this term includes a beta function of P of Y and Q of Y which makes the bound difficult to analyze. Hence, in the numerical section, we will use an ensemble converse instead, where we will restrict the set of possible input distributions to the selected input distribution used for the achievability bound. The bounds presented in the previous slide can be easily adapted to obtain bounds for preamble-based detection. First, since there is a dedicated preamble for detection, this stage is independent of the decoding process in both bounds. Indeed, they only depend on the preamble sequence XP. And for both bounds, the trade-off between false alarms and misdetections is given by the following alpha function. Regarding the achievability bound, we obtain an upper bound for inclusive error similar to the one for joint detection, which is given here. As we can see, this bound only depends on XD and YD, which represents the input and output signals corresponding to the data part. For the converse bound, we can simply apply the classical meta converse bound over the data part of the packet to obtain the desired bound. 
Next, we will particularize the results for the binary input AWGN channel. For the channel, the input output relation is given by the formula we have here, where for channel use K, X can take values minus the square root of rho, zero, and the square root of rho. Here, X equals zero stands for an idle transmitter. As input distribution for our bounds, we choose a product distribution where for each channel realization, the probability of transmitting a minus square root of rho is p, the probability of transmitting a square root of rho is one minus p, and the probability of transmitting a zero is zero. The reason why we do this is that setting p larger than one half helps for detection whenever this task is the performance bottleneck. As auxiliary output distribution, we choose the product distribution of the output induced by the aforementioned input distribution. Note that setting P equals to one half, we obtain the capacity achieving input distribution for Jenny added detection. To assess the performance of our bounds and compare the joint detection and decoding strategies with the preamble based ones, we have the following numerical example. Here, we plot the rate versus the block length for a false alarm probability equal to 10 to the minus four, misdetection probability equal to 10 to the minus four, and inclusive error equal to 10 to the minus three. We show this for two different SNR values, zero dB and three dB. In red, we have the Gini added detection bounds. In particular, the solid line is the classical metaconverse upper bound, and the dashed line is the so-called DT achievability bound. In blue, we have the joint detection and decoding bound presented in this talk. The solid line is the ensemble converse and the dashed line is the achievability bound. Finally, in green, we have the preamble-based detection bounds presented in this talk. The solid line is the converse bound and the dashed line is the achievability bound. As we can observe, Joint detection and decoding achieves a performance similar to Gini added detection when the combination of block length and SNR is large enough. In particular, for n larger than or equal to 190 when the SNR is 0 dB, and for n larger than or equal to 70 when the SNR is 3 dB. Also, we can observe that the preamble based bounds are suboptimal. However, as expected, the gap with joint detection and decoding decreases as the block length and the SNR increase, in which case detection becomes easier. Next, we present a numerical example that helps to understand the role of the parameter P in facilitating detection. In this plot, we have the value of the optimized parameter P versus the block length for a false alarm probability equal to 10 to the minus four misdetection probability equal to 10 to the minus four and inclusive error equal to 10 to the minus three. We again show the results for SNR values equal to zero dB and three dB. When the combination of block length and SNR is large enough, so detection is not the bottleneck anymore, the optimal value of P becomes 0 0.5, which is the value that yields the capacity achieving input distribution for Jenny added detection case. In other words, the value that maximizes the rate when detection does not require any extra effort. However, as we can see, when the block length and the SNR are small, and hence detection is the bottleneck, the optimal P becomes larger than one half. This corresponds to the region where the joint detection and decoding bounds were better than the preamble-based detection bounds but worse than the Gini added detection ones. Now it's time to wrap up and summarize what we have seen during this talk. We have presented finite block length bounds on the largest coding rate for frame synchronous systems where the receiver has to decide if a packet is present prior to decoding and if so, to decode it. We have presented bounds for joint detection and decoding, that is, when both detection and decoding are performed over data packets and for preamble-based detection and decoding. Our bounds 
are based on the beta beta framework introduced by Jan Gero and Poliansky Gero. We have particularized our bounds for the binary input AWGN channel. We have shown that joint detection and decoding significantly outperforms the preamble based detection. Also, we have shown that when detection is the bottleneck, skewing the input distribution is beneficial for detection. And this concludes this talk. Thank you very much.